Hello everybody, Stuart here from Stubu Gaming. Today I'm looking at the Van Helsing Trilogy. Um, that's all three games I'm doing in one video. Um, there is a very very good reason for that, and um, I will go into that in a little bit. But um, I'm going to do my normal kind of mini review style, where I look at the, the gameplay, the sound, the graphics. Um, but I also want to talk about some unique features as well. So, Van Helsing is one of the only ARPG games where you have a fully featured companion throughout the entire game. And by fully featured, I mean they have their own skill set, their own um, abilities, their own inventory, and indeed, they actually have a macro system where you can almost tell them what you want them to do. So you can set them for ranged or melee, you can set them to attack or be defensive, and you can also send them to town to do shopping. And we will go into that in a bit more detail. But for the first game specifically, there are a number of different skills that you can unlock, as with any ARPG. And it kind of works on a, a prerequisite system, um, where if you highlight a skill, it will tell you which ones you have and need, which ones you don't have and need. And it tells you how many skill points you need to unlock that skill, including what level you need to be. Companion screen on the on, actually on the screen at the moment, so your attributes are fairly straightforward. The skills on the left hand side are actually passive skills which affect your character. Um, so although they are the general skills for your companion, they actually are for you. The behaviour screen that I was talking about previously is on screen now um, and basically as you can see it just allows them to act as a um, almost like a, a vacuum cleaner for things that drop on the floor. So you can get her to automatically go and pick things up, you can send her to town and buy potions um, and you can tell her what type of combat you want her to do. There's a very interesting perk system where you gain a perk when your reputation improves. Um, there are various different ones and they have different effects on your character, but again, if necessary, I can go into that in a future video when I do more of a breakdown on each of the games specifically. Now, one thing about number two, which I'm going into currently, is they do tend to have actual animated cutscenes, which is really nice for a Neocore game. I wish they did more of that sort of thing in Inquisitor Marta, but that's a completely different uh, situation. So, from an actual game point of view, Van Helsing 2 is almost Van Helsing 1.5. Visually it's different, um, definitely different, but when you first start the game you are given the opportunity to basically import a character from Van Helsing 1. Now you can only do that if they're over level 30, which I obviously don't have, so this character is a new one. But the character classes are identical, you only have the three, one of which is a hunter, one of which is an elementalist, and the third one, which I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce, is basically a machinist or scientist. The skills that you have are the same, although they have added additional skills for people who are over level 30. So once you get to level 30 in this game, you will have different and uh, more skills to unlock than you would playing just the first game. I think they've done that so that if you do import a character, you're not bored. You still have things to work towards. Um, the user interface has changed slightly, but in reality, the actual um, things you can do are identical. There's no change whatsoever. Your attributes, um, your perks, your character sheet, literally everything is the same. Um, you do have some additional things, um, so you can see at the bottom there, there's an additional three to four skills. But other than that, there is very little difference. You still have the combo system um, and you still have skill points which increase damage, etc. You have more auras, I believe, over and above the first. And you also have, which I haven't shown in this particular video, separated skills between your hunter skills, which are your melee weapons and your occult skills which are your ranged gunfire that's the same across both games both one and two 
but the difference of course is that in number two you do have additional skills you also have a third active aura slot in the second game which you don't have in the first so again it's just emphasizing that the second game is supposed to be a progression of the first um the fact that you're character can be literally pulled from the first game into the second they had to do something to mean that you could progress further and i think those additional skills the additional auras that is basically what they have done so graphics wise both the first and second game are really nice to look at the fact that when you use certain skills and you're in long grass all the grass moves but it moves very very um well so some games like Diablo, the grass moves slightly, but this one, there is a, a very distinct movement. Um, particle effects are really nice, lighting's really nice. Not the best, but they are quite old games. But it is a very nice to play game. I would say some of the animations are a little bit off, but again, it's an old game and ARPGs have never been known for their slickest animations. Quests in number two are a lot more interesting than the first game as well. So you do have actual choices of answers. Now, I can't honestly say I didn't notice that happening in the first game. But in the second game, as you can see on screen at the moment, you have choices of what you want to answer. Now, they have a slight effect on the actual game, but the effect is limited to that particular quest. So if I pick that... You know, uh, okay, I understand it's an order, I'll go and do it, or whatever it might be, it will affect only that quest. You won't have a far reaching effect to your entire game. But it does highlight that they are trying to get more interaction with the player. Now, specifically the mission that I'm going through on this screen at the moment, I wanted to show this because it highlights the um, fun. That the developers want to have so this mission is saving private brian that's right brian not ryan so it's not a uh, repeat of the movie but they're obviously having a dig at that particular movie so going out and risking loads of people to go and rescue somebody just because someone likes his chocolates the film obviously was because his two brothers had been killed and they didn't want him to die as well. But even so, it's a similar ridiculous reason to risk the lives of many, many people. Um, and I like the fact they're taking that dig. They're having fun with the game. Because Van Helsing, if you watch the movie, does have that comedy aspect to it. So moving to the third game. Now this is where things take a rapid and very stark departure from the first two. You don't have the same three character classes. Indeed, I think only one class is the same, which is the uh, Elementalist. But the Hunter that you used in the first game has been split into two, so the Hunter in this one is literally a ranged character. But you have as on the screen at the moment, the Protector, who's more of a tank class. So you have a shield. Now, this is very, very different to the Van Helsing that you would most likely see if you watched any of the films or um, watched any of the cartoons or indeed read the comic books. But they've tried to make it more of an MMO style and feel to an ARPG, and it has worked. I must admit, I do find this game really nice. Graphically, it's definitely better than the first ones, but again, it is a newer game, so that's to be expected. The animations are still a bit odd, as you can probably see from the run of the character there. But the whole system has been made a little bit easier as far as combat's concerned. So you do more damage and you take less damage. The user interface, uh, they've taken that directly from Van Helsing 2. Um, there's no doubt about that. It's the same user interface for your character and your inventory. It does, however, take a very rapid departure when it comes to your skills. So whereas before you had a skill tree, here you have a skill wheel. And I've not so far seen where it has prerequisites for any of them. 
you can select any of them at any time provided you have the level and you have the skill points. Now you still have the same combo system and the combo system which I didn't really go into before um, basically allows you to get additional benefits when you're using your standard skills but you only get those benefits when you use the right stick to select which combo you want. Now you can select all three combo skills, you can select one combo skill, but you can only select them if you've learnt them. And you have three combo points that you can spread between any of those skills. It sounds very complicated and I'm not going to go into it now, but in essence it gives you full control over what you want to do with your skills and how you want those combos to work. Now with auras they've gone to the same wheel system and it looks very complicated in comparison. So I'm probably going to do another video on each game separately as a gameplay video. One thing they have done which I'm kind of a bit upset about in the last game is they've removed your companion's ability to go shopping and as though it's not too much of a problem because realistically you can still teleport back to town it was a nice feature um, I used it a couple of times it would have been nice to have kept it it's not a game breaker or a game changer but at the same time why remove a feature um, when you don't need to uh, they may have got fan feedback who said we never use it it's fine if it goes to be replaced by something else but as far as I can tell they've replaced it with nothing else so it's a bit of an oddball to remove it uh, if I'm being perfectly honest Don't say a word. I wanted to I show you uh, some of the fun things though the they do have tie-ins to previous idea. games even in the third one so they're making a comment about something that happened in the second game where um, you can interact with objects in the world and you interact with a gong and it basically summons a load of demons. So in this one you're kind of, I've learned from my mistakes, I'm definitely not going to do it, don't worry. And your companion who moaned at you in the, the second game goes, oh well it's my turn and does it anyway. So again it's just showing that humorous side from the development team and I appreciate that sort of thing in this sort of game because the whole idea of these games ARPGs and games in general is to have fun so why do so many games take themselves too seriously I don't know so what do I think well out of the three I believe Van Helsing 3 is definitely the best but that's to be expected as it's the latest game none of them are what you would consider bad um, they're all really good and the fact that the most expensive one is only 16 pounds and that's number one strangely enough the others are 12 pounds I believe 11 pound 99 they're all an extremely good buy for less than the price of a full game I have got three games and that cannot be a bad thing so would I recommend these games if you like ARPGs without a doubt buy them now literally just do it well guys thank you very much for watching if you like the video please make sure you do click that like button subscribe if you're new to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified when I upload next and leave me a comment down below what do you think of the games well guys thank you very much for watching I really do appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you for my next one very soon take care bye for now